Hey, it's JC here at JC's Comics and More, your pop culture superstore, 6725 West Central Avenue. That is Toledo, Ohio, 4361741931609. JC's Comics and More at Hotmail.com. This is Monday the 20th. Uh, I think this is the 20th. It's sometimes the days kind of blending with each other. Got some comics that I'm um, getting priced up. And I'm going to take a quick look at some of these. And I do uh, do mail order. Uh, you can certainly contact me through the email or give me a call at the 419-531-6097 number. Um, take down your information and get the stuff shipped off to you. But first off, we've got uh, some from DC Comics. There are Ghosts series. Uh, a lot of these are reprints. These are from the it's like 71, 72 uh, new stories and reprints. These were, I want to say, 52 pages uh, when those came out. Uh, great covers. But we have issue one. We've got issue two right there. We've got issue three. Now issue two did have some water damage to it. But we've got issue three. We've got issue four. We've got issue five. Issue six. This went back to, uh, they reduced the page count, went back to normal pages. We've got issue seven. We've got issue nine. Missing issue number eight. Got those there. Got some of these here I already have priced up. Uh, there's an Invincible Iron Man number 54. This is the first appearance of Moon Knight or Moon Dragon, uh, who was known as Madame McEvil then. She was McEvil. Uh, but got a great Gil Kane cover. Uh, so we have that there. There's uh, Iron Man number 100. The great Jim Starlin cover, classic cover, classic Jim Starlin cover. But a couple of copies of Amazing Spider-Man number 124. So we got a couple of 124s here, trying to get uh, get this without the glare. And so we've got a couple of 124s, which is the first appearance of the Man Wolf. So, let's move on to the Avengers. This is the main focus of this video. These Avengers here. Uh, we've got Avengers. It's got to focus in a little bit. Uh, issue number 74 of Avengers. These great covers. Nobody stops the Black Panther. Nobody. Help. Police. Police. No. Never mind. It's too late. Great John Basama cover, and this issue also has um, has a circulation uh, numbers in it. Uh, they printed 411,000 copies of this book. Take that in, 411,000 copies. Now they did not sell all 411,000 copies. They sold. 238,000 copies, but still 238,000 copies compared to the average book these days selling what 25,000 copies, 30,000 copies, and they think that's good. They think that's a good book when it sells 50, 60,000 copies. No, that's pretty, pretty pathetic. You know, 238,000 copies of this comic sold. We have issue number 75, the return of Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch. Uh, Wanda, uh, for whatever reason, she uh, either dyed her, her hair black or they just decided just to color her hair black. We have Quicksilver, and this also, if I remember correctly, has a ad of the Joe Welder featuring Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's several of these books have several of these comics have these Joe 
or uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger ads in them. And then some of the uh, uh, letters in here, I don't think this one in particular, there's a lot of letters pages have uh, letters from Mike W. Barr and, and uh, Wendy Peeney, but Wendy uh, signed her letter, Mrs. Richard Peeney, I'll show you that. But this is the first appearance of Archon the Magnificent. When I speak, let all else keep silent. Again, just great stuff. This great uh, John Basema and Tom Palmer, written by by Roy Thomas, number seventy-five. We've got number seventy-eight here. Uh, this features the first appearance of the Lethal Legion, and of course. Part of that Lethal Legion is the Man Ape. Nice to see the Man Ape back again. Man Ape made, made several appearances uh, in the Avengers. This is illustrated by Sal Basama with Tom Palmer. But the Man Ape, like I said, is part of the Lethal Legion. And before we get to that, we've got some of these great Marvel house ads. This uh, house ad for Amazing Adventures with a Black Widow. And the Inhumans. And again, we look at the the letters pages here. So there are some interesting letters pages that these guys wrote. Uh, here's for Astonishing Tales. I think I said the other one was Amazing, Amazing Adventures. This is Astonishing Tales, Kazar and Doctor Doom. Ooh. Stan Lee, Roy Thomas, Jack Kirby, Wally Wood. Stan Soapbox that month. Good news, gang. You'll get a break from all my rapping this month. There's just enough space remaining for me to tell you that. There's not enough space remaining for me to tell you anything. Excelsior, Stan Lee. Of course, you got your Polaris Nuclear Sub. But there's the Lethal Legion, the Melter, the uh, Power Man, the Swordsman, and the Grim Reaper, along with the Man-Ape. And he takes his revenge on Tatawa. Next issue is number, seven, uh, number 81 that we have. Uh, great John Basama cover. So you've got a house ad for Fantastic Four 104. The John Romita. You've got Sue, Sue Richards and uh, Magneto and Lady uh, Dorma. I think that's uh, Dorma the Submariner's main squeeze when he's not uh, going after Sue. Big things are coming from Marvel. Watch for them. Nuff said. There's always big things coming from Marvel. Marvel always had big things. This issue guest stars Red Wolf, a great American Indian character who they, does not look like this any longer. They deem it's not politically correct, but that's cool. That right there, that's he's he's it's it's just it's just too cool. He should they should have him looking like that in the comics. Gives uh, honors and gives respect to his heritage. There you go. There's the Arnold. Look at this great Marvel house ad there. Yeah, Arnold. I put two full, full inches on my arms, three inches on my chest, and trimmed to four inches off my waist in just four weeks. Right. Sure you did. Sure you did, buddy. Yeah, yeah, you sure did. Number 83. This features the uh, first appearance of the Valkyrie, although it's not the Valkyrie. It's uh, the Enchantress in disguise as Valkyrie. Uh, but this, this issue is interesting for several reasons. When this came out, this was... Uh, uh, there was a cover story, or there was a, made the pages of Newsweek, and it also made the pages of several 
New York uh, City uh, magazines as well because it's with the uh, women's um, uh, women's lib uh, movement going on at that time. But uh, this had features Black Widow, Valkyrie as uh, Enchantress as Valkyrie, Medusa, Wasp, and Scarlet Witch. Written by Roy Thomas. Illustrated by the great John Basama. There you go. Another great house ad for a Daredevil uh, King Size Annual and Marvel Tales reprinting Amazing Spider Man, uh, I think issue 39. Then we're going to have another Thor 183, John Basema cover, Doctor Doom versus the Thunder God. Again, these, these old Marvel house ads. Fantastic. There you go. You've got you've got the you've got uh, the uh, the, Scar or, um, the Enchantress. That's when it's revealed that Valkyrie is the Enchantress. Other interesting thing about this story is part of it takes place. There you go, you got another house ad there. Let's see what Amazing Spider Man. Amazing Spider Man number 92 came out that month. But this story also took place in uh, Rutland, uh, uh, Vermont. And that's got the costume contest and everything, and special appearance by Roy and Jeannie Thomas right there. But there's Tom Fagan that always put this thing. This thing was a real was a, a real celebration uh, on Halloween, uh, costume contest and everything. And this features uh, this issue also features the Masters of the Universe, which is the Radioactive Man, Whirlwind, the Melter, and Claw. It's a great issue there, great landmark issue. Wish it was in better condition, but hey, you take what you can get. And then the very next issue, issue uh, 84, you have uh, Archon back teaming with the Enchantress. That's where she disappeared to. You got an ad for Al Unser. There's a Mike W. Barr letter. One of many that are in here. Look, Mighty Marvel is on the move again. Look, I'm just coin curious. Corn curios. But great John Basema artwork. For some reason, there was a short period of time where uh, they had page layouts like this here with the ads. I don't know why exactly they did that. Uh, this also features the Black Knight. We've got issue 85. This is a uh, key issue. Uh, it says the return of the squadron sinister, but also, and again, John Basama, and you got Frank Giacola doing the uh, inks this time. Special uh, cameo by the amazing Spider Man, as they're giving away uh, toys for tots, uh, kids with the Marines. But, like I said, uh, features the first appearance. Of the Squadron Supreme, got the American Eagle, Lady Lark. Uh, this became the Golden Archer, but he was known as Hawkeye then. You've got Tom Thumb. We also had you've got Nighthawk, who's part of the Squadron Sinister. You've got Doctor Spectrum, Hyperon, the Wizard, all there as well. And this continued into the next issue 
Here we've got a house ad for Amazing Spider-Man number 94. This uh, had this issue. I still have this issue. Got this issue when I was a kid. Uh, first time I found out Spidey's origin. That was retold. That's the first time I found out about Spidey's origin. And we've got issue 86, the second part of the Squadron Supreme storyline. I think this has a Arnold Schwarzenegger ad in it. Uh, it has a house ad for Amazing Spider-Man or for Fantastic Four 106. There's another Mike W. Barr letter. Another uh, circulation report. This copy sold 380. 5,000 copies. Again, companies uh, these days, oh, Batman sold 100,000 copies. Oh, boo-hoo, that would have been canceled. 100,000 copies is compared to nothing to 285,000. And this had uh, artwork from our pal Sal Basama with Jim Mooney. Next is issue 88. This had a crossover with the Hulk. Has uh, with Cyclops. This uh, based on a story, uh, a plot from Harlan Ellison. And with Jarilla, uh, again, Sal Basama. Take a look here. Got a house ad for King Cole, number one. And there it is, talking about Avengers 83 making the appearance in Newsweek and the New York uh, magazines. This also features a letter from Tom uh, Fagan, who uh, did uh, from Rutland, uh, for Vermont. So this is uh, this is kind of a poignant uh, issue to have for for many reasons. The Hulk uh, has not been shrunk and has not met Jarella yet. There's a cameo from. Uh, I uh, got the the Falcon there. There you go. There is the butt, squ the Black Plowman, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's not a tumor. Oh, get to the chopper. Oh, Arnold, uh, we love you. Issue number ninety, Judgment Day. Uh, this issue's kind of eaten up a little bit, uh, eaten up quite a bit, in fact. Uh, but as far as letters in here, I don't think there's any letters in here. From anyone of any a note um, but a great solid issue nonetheless you've got the Cree in here you've got uh, <coughs> excuse me got Ronan the accuser you got Marvel the captain Marvel you got Marvel in his uh, in his original white and green Uniform as well. You've got the Supreme Intelligence. You've got the Fantastic Four flashback. You've got the Super Scroll. Where's he at? Where's Super Scroll? There he is. See, there's, there's the Super Scroll. And next we go to Avengers number 94 with the Mandroids. This is during the Kree Scroll War. You've got Neil Adams artwork in this here. And then you also do have John Basema artwork as well. And again, Captain Marvel is in this. And you've got the Inhumans, there's Trident. As the Avengers are fighting the, the uh, Mandroids. Let's take a look. He's got the Super Scroll, of course, is in here. There he is. Neil Adams did one hell of a great Super Scroll. Issue number 95, Avengers versus Inhumans. Again, part of the Kree Scroll War. Mark Jones, again, nobody of great note. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 104 came out with uh, Craven the Hunter. There you go. Again, great Neil Adams artwork in this here. Issue number 99. Got a John Basema cover. You got Barry Smith doing the work on the inside. They're trying to bring back the memory of of Hercules, you got the return of Hawkeye. He's wearing his his uh, his new skirt outfit. Again, we're talking about Nick or uh, Luke Cage right there. That could be maybe is that Luke Cage first appearance? And this copy sold three hundred and they're selling three hundred and forty-two thousand copies at that point. Again. 
Uh, there's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Again, 342 copies. Uh, the 300 or 30,000 copies, 20,000 copies that most comics sell these days aren't even a pimple on that Avengers runs ass. Uh, here's Avengers number 100. Look at that great yellow cover. Again, you've got, you've got Barry Smith. Barry Smith did the cover. This featured every single Avenger who had been an Avenger at that time was in there. You got the Hulk, you got Hercules, you got everybody who's in here. And for some reason, the Enchantress is one of the villains in here, and then so are the uh, uh, so are the Greek gods. But for some reason, the Enchantress has white hair, not blonde hair, and she's got a red outfit rather than her traditional green outfit. So we go on to Avengers 104 is next. There's Rich Buckler cover, an early Rich Buckler cover, inked by Joe Sinnott. And you've got Larry Trask, and you've got the Sentinels. Uh, this is also, I want to say, is this Roy Thomas's last? This is Roy Thomas's last issue writing the Avengers also. So it talks about that in there. And again, look at the writing. There's another Mike W. Barr letter. We go to issue 105. Steve Englehart takes over at this point. Uh, Jim Mooney uh, inks uh, John Basema. And again, nobody of great note. There's a little house ad for the cat. Wanda has black hair. They go and they fight the Savage Land mutants. Issue 106 of the Avengers. This uh, was a Rich Buckler cover. Rich Buckler, George Tuska, Dave Cockrum inked. So a great book here. There's a Frankenstein house ad. And again, nobody of great notes there. The Space Phantom makes his uh, appearance. This might be his first appearance since issue number two of the Avengers. Issue 107, Grim Reaper's back, Rich Buckler cover. Jim Starlin did pencils on this. Jim Starlin, George Tuska, and Dave Cockrum. Great early Jim Starlin artwork. Early Jim Starlin artwork. Amazing. Again, let's see if there's any house ads in this. There's an Invisible Man house ad. We move to Avengers 111 next with Magneto. Don Heck did the art on this uh, with Mike Esposito. There's a Dracula Lives house ad. There's a Foom house ad. I want to say that there's a couple of other house ads in here. Maybe not. No. Issue 112. 112 is the first appearance of Mantis. This copy is in nice, very nice shape. Uh, the Return of the Black Panther. The Lion God Lives. You've got the Black Widow in there. And let's find... There she is. The first appearance of Mantis. And she wasn't some dumb bunny like uh, portrayed in the movies. This this character is actually pretty cool. The character in the, in the movies is pretty dull. There's a house ad for Monsters Unleashed. Another house ad for Foom. Issue 113, Your Young Men Shall Slay Visions. Buckler and Senate cover. Bob Brown started uh, doing the artwork at this time. There's another Monsters Unleashed. Another Foom. Marvel is on the move again. There you go. There's a house ad for The Haunt of Horror, a horror magazine for Marvel. More Wanda. But issue 114, 114 features the return of Mantis. This is the first Mantis cover, John Romita cover. Wanda has brown hair on the on the cover. I 
Savage Tales, House Ed, there we go, there's a Vampire Tales with the man bat called Morbius. Move over, Dracula. Here comes the vampires. Marvel's newest nightmares mag of all, featuring the man bat called Morbius. Spider Man's most macabre foe, and now in a series all his own. Fearful first issue, only 75 cents for 76 big pages. Now on sale wherever magazines are sold. But this is where Mantis and. Um, comes back or comes to the Avengers uh, her and the swordsman want to join the Avengers we've got Avengers 115 this has got Tales of the Zombies in that one of the great things about this this has the prelude to the Defenders Avengers War with Loki blind Loki and then meets up with Dormammu Avengers 119. This is another Rutland, Vermont uh, issue with the collector. And there's Tom Fagan. And the, the collector is in Rutland, Vermont, trying to get the Avengers to add to his collection. But this is the Halloween, the big Halloween issue. Good issue 120. Uh, this is part of the, uh, the return of the Zodiac. i got to make this quick. I'm running out of time. If you do like these videos, please be sure. This is a Jim Starlin cover. Be sure to uh, uh, subscribe. Be sure to like the channel. But I was trying to find the Wendy Peeney uh, letter in here. It might, might be in the middle here. Got that great cover right, right there. Uh, there's... Adventure in the Fear, it's just fear, but they called it Adventure in the Fear number 20. That was the when uh, Morbius took over. And not seeing anything here. So let's move on to the next issue. 121, again, Zodiac. John Romita cover. And I believe this is also the first uh, when they started putting in the Marvel value stamps. That's the first time it was in there. And then you've got this house ad for Tomb of Dracula and Werewolf by Night when the two crossed over. From Tomb of Dracula 18, Werewolf by Night 15. Issue 122, continuing the Zodiac storyline. Vision is the Marvel value stamp, and then you got a house ad for Killdozer. Got issue 123, uh, the origin is part of the origin of Mantis that uh, uh, Libra is Mantis's father. There you've got the house ad for Giant Size Superstars. There's Marvel Value Stamp, number four. And let's look at this really quick. Uh, issue of the number 13 of the Marvel Value Stamp. Uh, issue 127 of the Avengers. Crossed over with Fantastic Four 150. Thanks for watching.